On today's episode of the Locked On Texans podcast, what does year two look like for the Houston Texans? And what are your expectations for the 2024 season? Will it be a disappointment if it doesn't end in a Super Bowl ring? We'll talk about that and more. You are Locked On Texans, your daily podcast on the Houston Texans. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, everybody, to this Monday's, Tuesday's episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Hope you guys had a good Labor Day, Uh, but this is your team every day on the Locked On Podcast Network. I am your Texans football analyst, John Some Sports Guy Hickman, on the other side of the screen, back in Houston, Cody Davis, still Texans credential media member. On today's episode, we will be looking at a few things, but I want to let you guys know that if you are one of our everydayers, thank you for coming back to continue to listen or watch Cody and myself. And shout out to all of our newcomers. Please subscribe, like, and comment to the Locked On Texans podcast on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game, game time. time. Ooh. Cody, listeners and viewers, there's a few things D'Amico knows about this coast team. Well, he knows that this is a very good front seven, and it starts with the two interior guys, DeForest Buckner and Grover Stewart. Uh, He knows that those guys are a force inside, but he understands it's not about if we have to run it, whether we have to do it to move the ball up the field. So he knows that this offense got to come out clicking on all cylinders. He knows the key for this defense to become better is consistency. And the Mm -hmm. first game is about getting better at tackling, having to tackle as a team. He knows this defense had too many missed tackles last year. So for Houston, it's important for them to improve the run game and the passing game. They have to be better at tackling. But D'Amico knows the coach will prepare for the Houston Texans, and I think this week is about making sure your Texans are also prepared for the coach, despite not knowing if Will Anderson Jr. will play in Sunday's game. Cody, take it away. And unfortunately, that is going to be the number one story surrounding the Houston Texans as they kick off their 2024 campaign. And look, ladies and gentlemen, John, listeners and viewers, I'm starting to get a little worried. I'm starting to get just a tad bit concerned because we have not seen Will Anderson Jr. over a month now. For those of you guys who don't know, I believe the week when they was in Cleveland getting ready for the Hall of Fame game, if I'm not mistaken, or the week after the Hall of Fame game, uh, Will Anderson Jr. left practice early with an ankle injury. And at the time, Coach D'Amico Ryans did say it wasn't nothing to be concerned about. Kept him on the shelf. Wasn't really concerned at the time. However, when Coach D'Amico Ryans had an opportunity to give just a minor update on Will Anderson Jr.'s availability, for Sunday's game, he just said, we'll just see how not only Will, but everyone else who has been banged up through our preseason, through our training camp, we will see where they are heading into Sunday's game. And I don't like that, John, listeners and viewers, because look, if the Houston Texans are going into week one without Will Anderson Jr., man, it's a little bit concerning because first and foremost, not only do you going, are you going to go into week one with a weakened defensive line, you're going to go into a weak defensive line going up against Jonathan Taylor. And look, we can sit here and have a debate whether Jonathan Taylor is the best running back in the game, but if he's not number one, he's no lord in two or three on everybody list and this is a jonathan taylor who on the final game of the 2023 regular season had an opportunity to record a buck 88 on 30 carries against the against the houston texans if it wasn't for that slight miss opportunity he had late in the fourth quarter you're looking at a situation where jonathan taylor would have single-handedly demolished the houston texans and beat them had if it wasn't for that late blunder in the fourth quarter Quarter. But here's what Coach D'Amico Ryan's had to say about Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, Jonathan, I think he's a successful running back just because he runs with such great contact balance. Like it's, it takes more than one guy to get him down. He does a really good job breaking tackles. He plays physical. He plays downhill. He runs the ball. He plays the game the right way. I think that's what makes him a really good running back. And here's why I say I am, I am worried about if Anderson missed this game. 
If we go back to week 18 of last season, remember, they took on a weakened defensive line without Jonathan Grenard. And, yes, we could sit here and debate, and, look, we could all agree, Daniil Hunter is better than JG. That's part of the reason why they basically made the look, like, arrow quotation mark trade. But what I will say is this. If that defensive line isn't 100% healthy, you're looking at a situation where it's going to be hard for the Houston Texans to stop the run. And not only that, you also got to take a look at – Anthony Richardson as well, who had look, I understand, I get it, I saw the game. He didn't look that good in the preseason, but you're still looking at a guy who is, look, this is basically going to be his rookie season. He's knocking off Russ, and if he can find any type of hole to run through against the Houston Texans like we saw during week two of last season, it could definitely be a detriment to the Houston Texans. I do want to add this. Yes, their linebacker unit is better with Aziz when you take a look at the fact that last year they had guys like Denzel Perriman, who was not known for being a run stopper, and other linebackers who had, who had issues at, at tackling however that linebacking core is also going into the season a little bit beat up because you're not going to have christian harris i think this is somewhat a cause for concern so we talked last week about well you know will houston look to bring in somebody for the inside d line position because that unit is weakened right mm -hmm. for six games you're not going to have Danico autry due to suspension okay well the two big guys up front show that they can hold it down with Foley and Mario Edwards. Khalil Davis also got busy in that mix, and I'm glad Houston was able to bring back Marcus Harris, a rookie out of Auburn. But with no Will Anderson, and by the way, I think Derek Barnett can fill into his job and role pretty well, but he's no Will Anderson. Now you're going up against the coast with no Will Anderson, no Danico Autry, a weakened interior D-line spot, you know, group. Those guys are going to have to play a lot of snaps. And you have Daniel on the other side, which is great. But the Indianapolis Colts, when healthy, they are still one of the more premier offensive lines in the league in terms of being able to move bodies out the way, in terms of being able to pass block. Uh, they only allow, I think it was 41 sacks last year, ranking them 15th in the league, so middle of the pack. And look at how many of those offensive line injuries that they had to go through last year. So now they're getting healthier coming into this year. Take it for however you want to. I know guys feel a different way about PFF, but they were ranked a top five offensive line for the 2024 NFL season. And you're going up against this line with a running back. I, I, I hadn't even mentioned Jonathan Taylor yet with the running back that whenever he suits up to play the Houston Texans, Mm. I mean, Gail Sayers, <laughs> uh, Earl Campbell, Prime C.J. Johnson. I mean, uh, Chris Johnson, C.J.2K. Like, he just turns up against the Houston Texans. So, yes, yeah, a concern. Because not only is my front four weakened, but totally my front seven is weakened. I'm out I'm without Christian Harris. Mm. A guy who, you know, would would lessen the concern if he was playing because of what we believe he'd be able to be for this defense. Mm -hmm. So they're going to lean on a lot of the leadership from Aziz. They're going to lean on a lot of the leadership from uh, Daniel Hunter, who said, I don't have to think of this defense. I could just go. But I think that for the Texans going up against the Indianapolis Colts without Will Anderson, what they're going to have to do is make sure – they create as much pressure on Anthony Richardson, who did not have a good preseason, in order to allow their defense to be in favorable downs. So instead of third and three, third and four, man, you know what? We got some pressure on them. It's third and eight. It's third and nine. So going into year two, what does this game against the Indianapolis Colts look like for, for two franchises that got a lot of year two similarities to, to look at. So we're going to talk about that more on the other side of the Locked on Texas break. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book, but uh, there's a lot of, uh, how can I put this? There's a lot of people missing football games going on due to contractual situations and <laughs> FanDuel got a little something for everybody, and 
That includes now through September 22nd. All FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV-based plan, you'll be able to watch every single Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment and you can cancel anytime. Just visit FanDuel.com. Download America's number one sports book. Again, visit FanDuel.com. New year. Not worried about last year. Right? Last year was last year. Uh, we're fully focused on 2024. We're a completely different team. They're a different team as well. So, for me, last year has nothing to do with this year going into their place. I, I, I love – D'Amico is never – you're never going to catch him talking about the past. One never. of the <laughs> – when he first got here, one of my first questions I had a chance to ask D'Amico um, was about how is he looking at uh, reshaping the roster to, you know, help this team be a much better run team compared to last year. And he said last year's in the past. So – He's never really worried about last year in the sense of getting caught up in it, which is why I think this Houston Texans t- uh, team, excuse me, has a very good window to win a championship because it's all about getting better and better and better. And with the Indianapolis Colts, you got Anthony Richardson, Cody, and Jimmy Ward said, I don't know if he'll slide. But my job is to hit him, so it is what it is. But uh, with, with, with Anthony Richardson, I think for Houston, and I'll give it back over to you, but I think for Houston, for year two, for D'Amico to say last year doesn't matter, I think it still matters for the Indianapolis Colts. I think the last time you saw your franchise quarterback in a half against this team, it looked like it was going to be a blowout. Hmm. The very next game, he goes out again, I think, in a, at the end of the first quarter, second second quarter, maybe a half, and you don't see him for the rest of the year, and Anthony Richardson was your first-round quarterback. So as we look at the Houston Texans kind of not worrying about year one under D'Amico, under C.J. Stroud, you know, for the coach, I think getting back to the positive for year one, uh, the positive, excuse me, for year one is important for them. And look, when we when we look at the Houston Texans going into this quote unquote year two, because technically it is year two in making that next step in their rebuild, I, I look at it from a standpoint of this. One, I am happy to know that this is an organization, this is a franchise who are not they're not talking about what they did last year and they're not trying to quote unquote replicate the success that they did last year because in hindsight, John listen to the views if that was the case, then I could say, okay, we should definitely be concerned for, for about the Houston Texans because every time you have a franchise players and stuff who always want to revisit the past, whether good or bad, happy or sad, it's not going to end well for this current group of Houston Texans. And not only that, they also need to make sure that they have a new mindset because last year, whether they want to agree with it or not, they were the surprise of 2023. They were the biggest surprise of the NFL, not only as a team, but on the individual individual standpoint, we look at Bobby Sloyd going into year one for him. Uh, head coach Demico Ryan's going into year one for him. Will Anderson Jr., C.J. Stroud. I mean, he basically put together arguably, if not the best season we have seen by Reed quarterback. Like everything for the Houston Texans were new, fresh, and surprising. This year, they are no longer in that boat, and they have so many teams from the teams that they passed up, i.e., like the Indianapolis Colts, like the Jacksonville Jaguars, and like teams who are trying to make sure they stay ahead of them, like i.e., the Baltimore Ravens, who beat them not once but twice last year. The Kansas City Chiefs, who a lot of people claim that could beat them in the AFC championship game, championship game if they were to meet. And other teams that's ahead of them, the Houston Texans are in a position where they cannot focus on the past. Because anytime they start looking back in the review mirror at what they did last year and start reminiscing on last year, that's, just when, they, that's when they're going to start hitting a lot of roll bumps. And that's when we're going to get on this show and start talking about whether C.J. Stroud is in a year or two slump or whatever the case might be. Is Will Adams Jr. in a year or two slump or whatever the case might be. Is Derek Stingley Jr. living up to the expectation that we have for him at the beginning of the season? This is an organization who cannot afford to keep hindering on the past. And what I love most about hearing from this coaching staff 
and hearing about these players. Even when you bring up the past and they reflect on it in a way, they always talk about what they can do better, i.e. the defense. Yeah, the key is consistency, and it's always important. The first game is going to be about tackling. Right? You have to tackle as a team. right? We, so talk about our defense last year. Right? There's too many missed tackles. So for us to improve in run game and also the passing game, we have to be a better tackling team, and that takes just more hats to the ball, more guys securing and wrapping up. And, and I think that's the key for Houston to win this game. I know that the possibility of not having Will Anderson is a, a, a strong possibility right now. Again, Coach said we'll see. Um, but for Houston, we talk a lot about the offense. The mm -hmm. offense will probably be the reason – that they win this game, but I do believe the statement needs to come from the defense uh, with relentless pressure. This cannot, and this isn't year one. And so for, for year two, not getting caught up on year one, but being better, this cannot be a Bryce Young game for, for the Houston Texans where you allow a young, for Anthony Richardson, still a rookie, you know, only played two and a half – the amount of games he played all together, maybe one and a half games, two games, maybe. Mm, I'd say maybe two. And that's a so, big maybe on two. Because that's eight quarters. I don't think we've seen him for eight quarters. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. So that's that's a rookie quarterback still trying to go through uh the progression to be a, a full quarterback. CJ got a year in. Anthony Richardson didn't. Now you can say that that may play to the favor of Anthony Richardson and Shane Steichen because you don't get a four years of tape from him to analyze him and to break him down. You only have, Cody, what you said, eight quarters to break mm -hmm. him down. That's $2. That's not a lot. But when we saw Anthony Richardson in the preseason, didn't look as looked that good and was able to create some turnovers on him, create pressure. This defense, I think, to open up this year, you, you're not going to make it to the Super Bowl without being able to create pressure. And honestly, if we look at the teams that were able to run on the Houston Texans last year, not a lot of names, lot, not a lot of star running backs. Hmm. Jonathan, he's a star. He's a damn good running back. Cody, you said top two, top three in the league. Christian McCaffrey after that. Is he number two? Is he number three? Is he number four? But he's in that tier. The statement is we're not going to let you run on us, regardless mm -hmm. of if Will is out there or not. We brought in two big free agents that can create that pressure on Anthony Richardson to have those third, third and longs that will give Houston the favor. So I think that year two for Houston is all about year two for D'Amico Ryans as a coach. You are the defensive coordinator. I think the pressure is on him to have those statements. And with D'Amico, I don't feel like we're going to miss out because I feel like for year two, whether they want to look at it last year or not, he knows what, what they needed to improve on last year. And it speaks to Nick Casario's free agent signs. It hmm. speaks to what we've been able to see here and experience through OTAs, through training camp, through preseason. Year two is about being able to say, hey, y'all not going to just run on us. We are going to be ferocious, fast to the ball defensively. We're going to create pressure and, and, and create turnovers. And I think CJ can put up 30 points. That's going to be a great headline. But if the Colts only score 13, that's what we need to be looking for. And please, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you are at the NRG stadiums on time this year. <laughs> we don't want Fox. We don't want CBS, ESPN with the with the uh, prime time with, games this mm -hmm. year. And the None first one is next Sunday. Games. It's a Sunday, Sunday night. night. Sunday night, Chicago, but that's in Chicago, right? No, that's, that's no, at in home. Houston. Well, that's in too. Houston. You got Chicago coming to Houston. <laughs> We don't need them to pan the <laughs> arena and we see empty red seats. No, sir. We don't need that. So if you hadn't got an opportunity to get your tickets right now, go ahead and check out Game Time. Download the app to your phone. Check it out online. Do whatever you need to do to make sure that you have tickets for a Sunday night's football game to open up the season against the Chicago Bears. And right now, Game Time has 50% off a Labor Day offer 
uh, if you want to go ahead and check out some baseball as well. What I like about Game Time, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find a ticket in the same section or row for a cheaper price. And if you want to know exactly how far you are from the field, you can check out Game Time's panoramic view option where you can get a view from your seat in the app before you buy what you need to do download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nfl for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms of apply again create an account redeem code l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n nfl for 20 dollars off download game time today what time is it game, game time, time. Today's show was sponsored by BetterHelp. What is something you loved to learn as an adult? You know, was it just a new cooking dish? Finding time to learn new things that you've always wanted to learn as a kid? Well, kids always learn and grow, but as adults, sometimes we lose that curiosity What's something you like to learn? Gardening, a new language, or maybe how to finally beat your best friend in bowling. I'm pretty nice at bowling, by the way. They call me, uh, you know, 10 strike tone. But what can help you get to those places mentally and physically? A uh, little, little, little advice here, guys. Therapy can help you reconnect with your sense of wonder because your back to school era can come. At any age, it's never too late to learn. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suitable to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. The new Locked On NFL is here. Locked On NFL is now two shows every day. First, the madman Tyler Rowland kicks off your morning with a double shot of NFL Espresso. And then stop by the barbershop with Tony Wiggins for some real NFL talk. Add mm. in the Locked On local experts and you get an unpre unprecedented NFL insight, hot opinions, detail breakdowns, all in 30 minutes. It's the new Locked On NFL. It's twice a day. Make Madman Tyler Rowland and Barbara Tony Wiggins <laughs> your second listen at the Locked On NFL on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. The two AFC South running mates and Tyler Rowland is definitely the Madman. <laughs> He's mad. He is mad. But are we Madmen for thinking the Houston Texans can end up in New Orleans for the Super Bowl next year, or is that a just a pipe dream, Cody? No, it's realistic, man. It's realistic. I've been saying that ever since, what, about June, mid-June, I, I started saying, do not be surprised if the Houston Texans are representing the AFC in New Orleans come February 2025. And, John, look, let me just say this. I said this last year, and I think it really might happen this year, but I would love to see, and no, it's not because of my new job, Houston and Detroit in the Super Bowl. I think that will literally give us an all-time great matchup. You're looking at two cities, two fan bases, two franchises. At what, about five years ago, this would have been a laughable situation, especially that team up there in Detroit. And now just to see how both of those teams has basically just have taken over both of their conferences. And I would never forget I believe if it wasn't the first, it was the second week of mandatory minicamp. And I seen CJ Stroud take the field. This probably would have, this probably might have been my favorite part of the offseason, of all season workouts. Take the field. Your three wide receivers were Diggs, Nico, and Tate. And in your offensive backfield, you had Dalton and Mixon with number seven <laughs> running the show. And from that moment, I said to myself, this can arguably be 
the best offensive team in the we league. Need to, we need to put some church organs under that. And not only that, <laughs> yo, you know, I'm about to take everybody to church now. And not only that, money out. <laughs> when training camp started, I'm looking at this D-line. And I see Altry, who's going to be here right when that schedule will start getting crazy. Will on one end and Hunter on the other end. And I'm looking at this linebacking court as, as you know, kind of, you know, shorthanded. Unfortunately, we haven't seen Christian Harris. And hopefully we can see him right when that right when that schedule starts to get a little crazy. But you got you, you see Aziz, Aziz back there being another coach, helping improve the production of Henry Tor Tor, who at the beginning of the offseason, we sit here talking, hey, is, is Henry T about to be a bus? No, sir, I don't think so. And not only that. You take a look at the fact that you had not one but two rookies in Kamari and Bula. Who, 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 by the way, got two new jerseys. Kamari Lasseter is four. Mm-hmm. Kalen Bullock is 21. Just mm-hmm. want to throw that out there. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting here and both of them like, rookie is just a term to us. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it from a standpoint, you could also have an all-pro corner. John, if this team stays healthy. And I do believe, I think that's the only thing that can hurt this. I say, I don't want to say the floor is championship, like AFC championship game. But, John, I would not be surprised if come the end of January, we're sitting here getting ready for the Super Bowl, man. And I know that might sound crazy. I know that might sound like a pipe dream, but outside of Kansas City, and I only say Kansas City because I mean at this point you gotta they're the new they're the new version of the New England Patriots. Like you gotta already include them in. But outside of them, I don't think there is no team in the league. Maybe Detroit in the NFC, but can you give me one team that you feel confident enough saying that come February 2025? I would not be surprised that they're representing their their respective conference. You can't uh, say Baltimore because Baltimore has always wet the bed over the last what three four years. Yeah, I, but I can't. Joe Burrow can't stay healthy, unfortunately. I, I, I can't. It's so for, for and the they Detroit, got internal dra- drama going on. You know, the in the Lions, NFC, the-, the Eagles. But I mean. Can they get back to the team that they was? What was that, 2021, 2022, whatever they made the yeah, Super Yeah, they got Kellen, Kellen Moore up there calling plays now. I, I really like Green Bay. I, I don't um, know if I'm a tr- – I, I believe in Green Bay, but not as much. Put it like this, and it all comes down to a quarterback. I got to see Jordan Love do it again. Now, I don't know because I've been watching CJ, been around CJ, talking to CJ, and saw stuff he do in practice, outside of practice, you know, every day. So it's like, no, CJ is for real. I don't know if I'm looking at it from that standpoint, but I got to see Jordan Love do it again. Just like I'm pretty sure somebody in Green Bay having the same conversation, saying to themselves, yeah. we got to see CJ do it again. I think for me, and what we what we should do, excuse me, what we should do is look at expectations for maybe the offensive side and the defensive side throughout the week because mm-hmm. I was looking at this from a whole different point, like, one of my expectations for this year is for Jalen Petrie to be this team's X factor on defense. Houston uh, signed Rashawn Re- Weaver, excuse me, to the practice squad. They released Malik Fisher. Weaver is a linebacker, has had some experience in the NFL. I believe this is his fourth year. But I, I think a, a reoccurring theme we're going to have here on this show is concern with the linebacker. Uh, group because of how thin it is, unless Henry T takes a leap forward. But I say Jalen Petrie, and I mentioned the linebackers because I think he's going to be an extension of that group. So, mm-hmm. you, you know, you're looking at a guy that can play with his head on fire when he's around the line of scrimmage, get downhill quickly when he's around the line of scrimmage, and has some pretty good ball skills. So I'm looking at tackles for losses. I'm looking at interceptions and turnovers. I'm looking at on every now and then, maybe at the end of the year type of expectation for him to have two sacks. So I think overall, my overall view for the Houston Texans is they do have a shot. What I want to talk about is, Mm. okay, how do they get to that place where the shot is real? What happens on defense? What happens on offense? Who is the player that is setting the tone? Who's the player that's in Jalen Petrie's place? I mean, in in case, who's the player that's just – if Jalen Petrie gives Houston his rookie year, that's a problem. Hmm. And a good a good problem to have 
for the Texans, that's a problem for the league. So I, maybe we should look at expectations for size of the ball this week. I agree with that. I agree with that. Because but but we're talking talk. about all pro Stingley. Hey man, uh, who's <laughs> to say that there's not an MVP here in Houston? Oh, it's definitely it's gonna be one in consideration. I tell you that. For uh, what sure. I'm saying, so that's the expectation <laughs> where it's like, oh man. But how does CJ get to the MVP this year? So if we go the rest of the week, let's say the next two days, we look at expectations on both sides of the ball. Not a whole what is show, your, just a segment. Oh, just so well, we can do it tomorrow. Just then. A segment. Um, what would you consider the overall expectation for this team as a whole? Yes, uh, New Orleans. New Orleans. That's yeah, that's, that's, that's that's the ceiling. So what they would know it. Be? They know it. What would, would the floor be? The floor. But the floor for me would be if they make it to a the game right before the conference game. Like the divisional they round. Make it, if they make it to the divisional round. Yeah, yeah, that's the floor. That's the floor. It, it, it got to be the floor because, but at the same time, John, I look at it from a standpoint. They cannot have the same season as they had last year because if you do. Then what was all this for? Going out and getting Stephon, going out and getting um, you know, Hunter and Aziz and all these other guys. Keep and, you in know, mind, whatever this is year be. too, man. We we we, we. I know that John, start. but we were around <laughs> we were around the team, so we see things differently from an eight eye view that other people may not see it. But this is year two, which is why it's important. Ceiling, New Orleans. We we down there eating beignets and having a good old time. Floor, <laughs> uh, division around. Bust not making the playoffs. So, like, and I, and I would say Bust can be making the playoffs, but I think not winning the division. We got more Texas talk this week. <laughs> so, make sure you guys listen. Please follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12. Also, like, comment, and subscribe to the Locked on Texans podcast on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C-O-T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace. peace.